Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Geraldine Hunt, Marketing Manager here at Titan HQ, and I'm joined today by James Clayton, our Email Archiving and Arc Titan Product Specialist, and Derek Higgins, a Senior Product Engineer here at Titan HQ. Both have massive experience in email archiving and data continuity, and they're here today to talk through some key aspects of email archiving for business and how to ensure business continuity with email archiving for your remote workers. So today we'll discuss how your email archiving fits in with your general business security, the threat landscape in our current pandemic situation, and how to ensure that your email archiving and email continuity are fit for purpose. I think you're going to find today's webinar very interesting. Um, we'll also be showing you some Arctitan product features along the way to demonstrate some of the key points raised in the conversation. And we'll also be taking as many of your questions as possible during the webinar. So please feel free to type your question uh, into the chat window during the webinar. If we don't get to answer your question today, we'll be back to you via email in the next 48 hours. So James, um, if I can start with you, and thanks again for taking the time to join us today. None of us could have predicted six or seven months ago that the current situation that we're all living in, apart from the serious health and social implications, many of us are now working from home. The work environment for many people, especially working in IT, has been totally transformed. Can you talk to us a little about where we are today in terms of the technology landscape and, and what does this new normal look like for the technology landscape? Um, hi, Geraldine. Um, thanks very much for having us today and a very good question. I think in reality, I don't think any of us know the answer um, to that. Firstly, we don't know what the future looks like at this point, but certainly we do know what's changed since uh, the early part of 2020. Uh, I mean, I think it's uh, fair to say that a fair amount of what we've seen so far this year will continue for the remainder of this year and uh, for a certain part of us um, for 2021 as well. So uh, we've definitely seen an increase in remote working, whether your business is exclusively remote working or the majority remote working, there are uh, fewer businesses now that have everybody in the office. And it feels like for the foreseeable future, uh, pretty much around the world, that's uh, going to be the case. As a result of that, we've seen increased communication not just um, over email, but of all electronic communication types. And I suspect that's uh, going to continue. Because of that increased use of communication, there's potentially increased threats. And I think there's a number of statistics that, that back that up. Um, there are nefarious people out there um, trying to take advantage of potentially changing security policies to, to get on top of that. Uh, we've seen economic challenges over the recent months, and I suspect they're going to carry on for the future. So. There's tighter margins for all businesses to operate on, and so they've got to make sure that they're getting value out of the investments that they're making, and, and IT for most businesses is initially a cost center that needs to be justified. Um, and I think the other thing we've seen at Titan is the growing role of managed service providers. Certainly in the initial couple of months after we went to uh, different types of remote working around the world, the MSP was absolutely crucial in making sure that the business could continue working, uh, they could deliver business as usual to the end user, security to the business, and efficiency improvements uh, around the, the organization. So um, we'll touch upon each of those points as, as we move through today, but certainly that's what uh, we've seen at, at Titan. So what does that mean? Um, all of those things that we've talked about before kind of represent some challenges. They also definitely represent some opportunities, and, and we'll talk about the challenges first and come on to the opportunities by implementing the correct policies as, as we go through this, this afternoon. Um, firstly, each employee now is in possession of um, what we're calling a mini data center. They've, they've got more data at their fingertips than they've ever had before. Frankly, that isn't just in the um, COVID-19 world. That's been the case for a period of time. And so we've got to make sure that we're protecting that. We need to make sure that as people move to a remote working world, that the policies that were built in place when people were in the office have not just been mimicked for the remote working, they've been put in place with remote working right at the core of what they do. So we've got correct policies and technologies to support that. Um, we've now got these devices containing company critical data. Given the speed of which many organizations met, went remote, uh, we now know that there's an awful lot of bring your own device work going on. And so people are using personal devices and personal laptops. 
uh, to interact and interface with the company network. We need to make sure that there's policies in place to protect that. I mentioned earlier, we're seeing this spike in email volume, um, not just uh, uh, you know throughout the working day, but we're actually seeing the, the number of hours people are working mean that there is no quiet time or there's a much shorter quiet time uh, for when emails are being sent. People are much more uh, commonly working in the evenings because that works better with their home life balance and things like that. So an increase of, of email volume and, and also a different working hours for, for the end user. Um, and we touched upon it a moment ago, Unfortunately, there's more opportunities for the cyber criminal um, because of those things that bring your own device piece, the potentially more relaxed mentality uh, that the end user has using uh, working from home and using their own device means that there are potentially opportunities that we need to make sure as providers and, and service providers are protecting uh, our customers. That's great. Th thanks for that, James. Um, and a related question on that, um, COVID-19 has prompted a lot of people to review their Office 365 security. Um, do you think Office 365 is enough like for security and compliance in these times of massive levels of remote working? And I suppose are most companies even taking the baseline steps required to ensure that their environments are safe and in compliance? A very good question. Um, uh, and, and, and quite, again, a difficult one to answer generally talking about all businesses. So I think how the best way for us to answer that is to, to think a little bit about what it is that Office 365 offers to the marketplace. Um, and once we understand that, then we can make decisions as to whether that is enough for us as a business uh, and then make future decisions off, off that from full knowledge. I think the starting point is to understand what Office 365 is and also what it wants to be. So uh, Office 365 um, markets itself as an enterprise productivity, mobility and collaboration tool. So it's a technology that doesn't aim to be a security solution, it doesn't aim to be a compliance technology uh, and it doesn't aim to support businesses with their e-discovery requirements. And so what we as businesses need to do is take a decision as to what our risk profile feels like for those things and whether we need something else uh, to add alongside that. Certainly, there is scope to add a best of breed technology to complement Office 365. Um, it does many things absolutely fantastically well, but there are definitely places where it doesn't uh, aim to be the perfect solution for all businesses. So there's definitely opportunity there that um, uh, allows us to think of complementary solutions. And certainly what we're seeing is that with a growing regulatory landscape around the world, specialist solutions that are built to help uh, with certain bits of that regulation uh, and answer some of the compliance driven questions are very, very useful. So some of those things include potential around um, data uncertainty. And what we mean by that is Microsoft's um, and service level agreement that every Office 365 customer signs up to itself suggests and recommends that businesses should be protecting their data somewhere outside of Microsoft. They make no guarantees to the um, availability of data forever and they take no responsibility that if data goes missing that they're liable for any costs incurred. So we should be thinking about um, doing what Microsoft tell us and protecting our data. I think the other piece that we see is around uh, process uh, inefficiency. Where we're seeing growing regulations, certainly things like GDPR for, for European businesses or businesses who do business with European businesses mean that having secure policies in place to improve those GDPR uh, and e-discovery functions is absolutely crucial. Uh, we want to make sure that the data we're holding in our uh, system, certainly from an email perspective, is absolutely true and indisputable so we can rely upon it later because that gives us security to answer legal claims, solve potential penalties uh, and protect ourselves from any uh, reputational damage which potentially could um, come to us in the future if we don't. Okay, thanks for that, James. Um, a lot to consider there and definitely important that, that companies and that IT departments, I suppose, take those important steps to ensure that their environments are safe and in compliance. I have a question in from an attendee um, re on a related topic. Um, so Leon from Newark asks, we've been using an on-premise archiving solution for years now. How can we support that in a cloud world um, James or Derek, would one of you like to answer that? I'll start, Derek, and if you've got anything to add, then, uh, then you can chip in um, towards the end. 
Uh, good question, Leon, and, and certainly one that we're hearing uh, not just on the Arc Titan product, but across the entire Titan HQ product portfolio, which is um, on-premise solutions that have been brilliant for the business for a number of years with people working remotely potentially answers um, perfect for that new world that we're working in. So um, the path that you're thinking about embarking on traveling down is one that is well trodden. Um, it used to be the case that moving from an on-premise solution to a cloud solution was complex. Um, that is much less the case these days. We need to migrate data, but certainly we can uh, put in place policies and processes that mean that business as usual continues for the organization, but you get the added benefits of a technology um, built for the cloud, delivered from the cloud with high availability, with redundancy, with failover, and without an additional service to manage and maintain from your own uh, on-premise data center. Do you have anything to add to that, Derek? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it is a good question and it is very relevant at the moment. Um, there was already a migration to the cloud um, pre-COVID-19. Um, but since COVID-19 and people working remotely, um, even more people are moving to the cloud now, um, mainly because they can trust it. They know now they really can trust the cloud. Um, and one thing that we also add to that is we have a global footprint in our cloud deployments. So we can guarantee that your data is stored within your borders. Um, we've got, glo as I said, we've got global coverage. Uh, so we can guarantee you that your data is stored within your borders. And that would go for all our products, uh, for Arc Titan, Spam Titan, and Web Titan. Uh, we would build a system for you in your, in your region um, to guarantee that the data is stored there locally. And especially now with everyone working remote, um, the cloud can be easier accessed um, for your users um, for their data. Whereas on-premise, you may need, there may be multiple firewall changes. There might be a lot of things you need to look after. Whereas in the cloud, we would look after all of those rules and all of those settings for you. Um, so it makes the move to the cloud um, quite seamless. That's great. Thanks for that. Um, remote working has come up a lot uh, so far, and I know it presents challenges to employers, uh, to IT teams supporting employees, and to employees themselves. If the future is remote working, uh, what are some of the key things that we need to consider, and how do you think that this will impact business performance? James, if I could ask you that one. Uh, yeah, good question. Um, uh, and I think one that we're all um, asking ourselves, and we have been asking ourselves for a period of time now. I think from our perspective, and specifically from an email perspective, with the growing increase in um, email volumes and therefore uh, data being shared over email, there is a growing need to have a single reference point that contains all of that email. And if we can put that in an easy to search location, then that gives uh, a really important kind of triangle that we see from an organization. Firstly, we've got the business allowing themselves to have confidence that they know what's going on and that they're there protected. The end user can carry on with a business as usual uh, process. They can be as efficient as they've ever been. And the IT department don't have too many uh, services and therefore potential security vulnerability spreading and proliferating around the organization. So that from our perspective is very useful. Um, what we also know as people are remote working is that more business is being done exclusively over email. Um, unfortunately, we're not able to meet uh, our customers. We're not able to negotiate contracts physically and, and sign paperwork face to face. So that's all happening electronically. Uh, and it means that there's even more data coming into our organization that we have obligations either to regulators or to our own stakeholders to maintain and make sure we've got a good um, a indisputable record of. So protecting that data uh, is absolutely crucial. Um, as, a, as part of that, should ever there be a need to come back and look at that data, find information again in the future and be able to rely upon it, then having a very fast way of finding that data that is built for e-discovery purposes to help protect the organization uh, is absolutely crucial. And I think that the specific thing that we're starting to see real traction on at the moment is um, sharing of data, where people used to go in the office physically to their colleague who sits near to them um, and ask them to share something, be it a, a piece of content, a marketing campaign maybe, or, or something else, that's more difficult being done remotely. So we're seeing um, email archiving solutions and specifically the Arctitan technology put in place 
to help share data around the organization for employees to, to work as efficiently as possible. Thanks, James. It's clear that we're increasingly reliant on email and access to the data that's stored in email. Um, it, it's become almost like an organization's oxygen supply, and it's important that it doesn't get cut off and that access to that massive store of data is consistent. How can companies and IT teams guarantee the continuity of access to that data? Um, yeah, a, a, another very good question. Um, so from, from our perspective, it comes back to these, that key thing I talked about. Business can't take downtime and must have its data protected. Uh, the user expects information to be accessible all of the time, and the IT department want to make that as efficient as possible. So, so you're right, it's, it's that challenge that people have to overcome. I think the first thing is implementing the right technologies, and we've seen a lot of people move to Office 365 as part of that email continuity um, policy uh, for a number of years now. But Office 365, like every other cloud service, isn't available 100% of the time. So having risk spread across multiple um, locations reduces the risk that the organization takes on. So we'd say implementing an archiving solution that allows for business and email continuity is, is really important. We also want a technology that can help reduce recovery time. So if ever there is an outage, coming back from that outage perspective and, and being able to operate again at full capacity is crucial. And in that outage time, we want the end user to be able to access their emails and continue to work. That takes the pressure off, off the IT department. It means that the business can continue to be as uh, operation operating as efficiently as possible. Um, while the IT department fixed the underlying issue that's, that's created an outage. So you're right, the organization's reliance on email has gone up because of the remote working, and therefore we need to make sure our policies match the importance of email to support that as we move forward. Thanks, James. And just a quick point on that, and I suppose on storing information in email. Given the status of the jobs market right now, um, a lot of companies are being sent speculative CVs, and this means that they're holding a lot of personal data. Does having an archive in place that holds everything, does that put the, the company in breach of GDPR and um, other data privacy regulations? So in regards to um, storing that data, um, obviously you have the right to store that data. If it is sent to you, um, it is obviously sent to you for a reason. Um, but within GDPR, there is a stipulation of the right to be forgotten. Um, so people, as you said, Geraldine, would be sending out um, speculative CVs and then in hindsight say, actually, no, I, I'd like to retract that or I'd like to get that back or, or have that removed. Um, so they may request the right to be forgotten um, aspect of GDPR. And that's exactly where Arctitan can come in and help as well. So we've got quite a robust um, search capabilities within Arctitan. There's actually multiple levels of access to the search and retrieval. So you can have your end users log in and search their own mail. Um, but you can also have what we call a privileged user who can search all mail in the archive for your domains. That user can view um, and maybe reply to that mail or re-inject that mail back into user's inbox uh, from the archive. But what you can also do is give them another level of privileges, which is the privileged and delete user. This is the only user that can delete from the archive. There's a Microsoft pen term legal hold where you push a person's inbox into legal hold stage where the user cannot make any edits or changes to any items within their inbox. Arctitan is in a permanent state of legal hold. So all the data is intact. Uh, there's a unique key with each individual mail and mail thread that can and has stood up in a court of law. Um, so instead of talking about it and going through it, uh, what I may do uh, now is I'll show you the interface. Uh, I'll run a search and I'll also do a search for an attachment um, to I'll, I'll almost mimic a search for a CV. Um, so I'll just share my screen now. So hopefully everybody can see the Arctitan interface now on the screen. Um, so I'm logged in here as a privileged user. So this is the user that can search 
the entire archive for my account, for my domains. This is generally maybe a HR manager or a CEO um, or someone who, who requires that level of access. So we've got our normal search criteria here. I can set a date range, I can push in keywords, uh, I can push in display names, to and from addresses, and attachment names, and even attachment keywords. So I can search for words within attachments as well. So if you did uh, receive a freedom of information request um, or the right to be forgotten request, I should say, um, you can add in maybe that person's name in here and that will pull back all data. So you can put in the keywords and the attachment uh, keywords and it'll pull back that data. So I'm gonna search the entire archive. One thing to note as well is our speed uh, of retrieval. And uh, that's one of the things we really pride ourselves on. A lot of archives out there, they're extremely fast at the start, but as the data grows over the years, you could see a degradation in uh, retrieval. Whereas ourselves, we store and search the database a little bit different. Um, we only need to load portions of the database that correspond with the date period that you were searching for. So what I'm actually going to do is search for any date. So obviously I have to load the entire database. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna just search for a, a keyword. Um, so I'm just going to search for a keyword. I can't type and talk at the same time, so I'll just stop for a moment. I'm going to search for the, the word positron. And if I clicked on search now, you'll see I must specify a reason for this search. Because I'm a privileged user and I'm searching all the mail for this account, you don't want that person doing searches they shouldn't be doing. Um, so I must specify a reason for my search. This is all kept within an audit trail as well. We've got another user uh, that's called a data guardian. And that user doesn't necessarily have access to searches or to privileged user or so on, but they will receive an audit trail of all searches performed by the privileged user. And I'll show you that in a moment as well. So I'm just gonna pop in the reason for search. I'm just going to put in webinar and click on search. So this is searching the entire database for the word positron. And now you can see I get just over 430 results in 0.74 seconds. So if I select any of these, I'll select the second one. I click on this and now I can read the body of the mail. Um, so we can see the word positron is within here. But if I scroll right down to the very bottom of here, we'll see the unique uh, keys and signatures. So we can see security check passed, that this message is intact and can be trusted. There's a unique message signature, message key, and identifiers. And this will guarantee, and as we said, this can and will hold up in a court of law. The next search that I'm going to perform is a search for an attachment keyword. So this is a word within an attachment. Our Titan is fully multilingual as well. So we've got almost all languages across the globe covered. So you can enter in any word in any language in here and search for that. So I'm going to search for the French word travail, the French word for work, and click on search. And as you'll see, I left the same, if I come back to my query, I left the same reason for search in here as well. And I get three results in 0 0.17 seconds. So if I open any of these, again, I'll go for the middle one, I'll go for the second one. We can see the body of the mail again. If we come down to the bottom, we'll see our unique keys. But at the top here, we'll actually see the attachment. So I'm going to click on that. And what that will do, that will download the attachment. And if I open it up, just to prove that the word is within this attachment, we'll see down here, the word travail here in the center. So this shows you the power of the search and retrieval. There's a number of aspects and different things you can do with your search results. You can select multiples at one time and maybe download them to a PST file. You may want to print that mail. You may want to export to PDF. You may want to download that mail. There's a number of different things you can do in here. You can also store these as what we call a case folder. So you can select multiples of these and store them as a case folder. Case folders are very useful. Um, 
what you can do is you can select all these, create the case folder, and you can share those results, uh, those specific results with maybe your legal team. So your legal team can then review those results and say, yes, that 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 does meet the requirements that, that has been uh, asked for, and you can share them out there. Or they may say, well, retract this or remove that, whatever the legal team says. So it's very useful uh, in cases like that. Even if your legal team is um, not within your, your own organization, um, they, you may may have them brought in from outside, you can share it with them and they will receive a link where they can view uh, th those mails and just the ones that you have shared with them. So that, that shows the power and the speed of the um, search and retrieval. The very last thing I want to show you now is I'm going to log in as a the data guardian, as I mentioned earlier. The This is the person who receives the audit trail. So they'll receive it as an email, but they can also log in to ArcTitan uh, to view these um, audit trails. So I'm just going to log in as that now. So now I log in and as you can see, I, I'm a data guardian, but I've also got what we call the basic user search. So as you can see, it's the very similar to the privileged user, uh, only I don't have to give a reason for search because in this case, I'd be searching my own mail and nobody else's, just my own mail. But if I come in here to transcript search, and I'll select the last one here. So as you can see here, um, this is the audit trail uh, of the searches that I just performed. So as you can see, this was the user I was logged in as, my IP address, and we can see here the stated reason for search, which is a webinar. Um, so this is my first search, the keyword Positron. I found 436 results, and this was the mail that I retrieved or I viewed. And down below this was my second search, again webinar, and the word Travai. And we can see everything in here, the, the mail that was retrieved as well. One aspect that I uh, didn't show, um, but this is the same for basic users and privileged users, is the advanced search. So this is where you can run more granular searches. So you can include certain parties and exclude certain parties. You can even push in keywords and exclude keywords. One nice feature in here as well are the, the different aspects. So you can push in a spelling steam or it sounds similar. So the spelling steam would be, say, the word color is spelled differently in the EU as it would be in the USA. So you can push in one of those spellings in here and say spelling steam, and it would retrieve both spellings of that. You can even get down to the level of the word red and blue, and they must be within three or four words of each other. Um, you can get extremely uh, uh, granular or, or wide uh, with your searches in there. Um, so that is the, the interface. Um, the, the power of the search is one of the things we really pride ourselves on. And as I mentioned before, we do have global deployments of this, so we can guarantee that the data will be within your borders, um, be that in the EU, the USA, Canada, uh, Australia, and so on. We can, we can make sure that it's within your borders for compliance purposes. Thanks, Derek. That was a great overview and really shows how easy and powerful and lightning fast that that Archetype and search function is. Um, I've been asked to share Archetype and pricing, and you can view this on our website, um, titanhq.com, or request it via email. I'll be emailing a copy of this recording to everybody after the um, after the webinar, so you can just reply to that email to request uh, pricing. I'll also share a pricing comparison guide which compares ArcTitan email archiving against the top six or seven email archiving solutions out there. So hopefully people will find that useful, um, especially if you're in the information gathering phase of researching alternative or new archiving solutions. Um, so, okay, I have one final question and I'll put it to both of you if that's okay. Um, we all agree that it's been a, a difficult year for everyone. And some aspects of life during the pandemic will pass and, and some will linger on. From a business point of view, um, we need to accept this, plan for it, and I suppose make the most of it. What do you see as the biggest impact the current pandemic will have on business and data continuity and email archiving going forward? I'm not sure who'd like to, to go first. I'll take that one then, um, Geraldine. 
It's a very good question. Um, I think in reality we don't know, and that's part of um, why picking the right technologies and the right partners to who, to host those technologies is such a crucial uh, thing because you get to grow with those organisations to maintain your um, your protection. Uh, I think. Certainly the things I'm confident that we will see is a continued reliance and probably a growth in reliance in both email and instant message communication, uh, be that Teams and Slack and things like that, but, but, but the core email service as well. I think we'll definitely see a continuing um, growth in the amount of business being done over email. I think we'll see that grow as confidence comes back into the economy and people can't pause for that much longer. They're going to have to do a business in a different way and email will be an absolute crucial piece of that. So I think from our perspective, what we will see is that there is a continuing and growing need for security around your email platform, availability and continuity for your email platform, and therefore a great archiving solution is an absolute key pillar to businesses through to the end of 2020 and into 2021 as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, again, it's, it what what's going to happen in the future it's very hard um like if you asked me that question this time last year we'd have never seen a pandemic coming so it, it it's it's hard to say but definitely the way things have gone this year with the remote working um there's been some very good positives out of that as well it's always good to bring the positives in so people can have now realized we can work from home um we 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 can have a remote workforce so that that opens you up to, to new horizons uh for even new employees as you're mentioning sending out cvs and so on um more and more companies will have more of a global footprint even um as the future goes on in my opinion um but for that as well you still we still need to keep all our employees safe and secure uh, because they're still going to be targets um, so email archiving is extremely important uh, for that uh, because you've got a genuine copy of your all your mail um, in a trusted environment that is safe. But along with that, I think we're going to see a growth in the use of agent-based um, security. So obviously everyone's used to the endpoint uh, antivirus, but say um, endpoint web filtering. Um, so say for ourselves, our Web Titan Cloud with our OTG agent, um, that is, is growing all the time. So I, th I think what we're going to see is um, a more of a shift to the cloud where you've got one interface to log into to view all your security um, for your different aspects. Um, one interface for your archive uh, archiving. Um, but that all feeding back into the agents that are deployed remotely for your users who are working remotely as well. So I think we're going to see more of an uptake in the likes of a one-stop shop online where you can view your security uh, for your different aspects and then all those feeding back into agents. I, I think that's where we're going to see a, a big move in the next year. Yes, absolutely, Derek. From a, from a business point of view, we need to uh accept this that remote working is not going away and plan for it and make sure that we have the best technology in place to, to support it so thanks very much james and derek um, for uh, presenting today um, and thanks everybody for attending today's webinar as i mentioned earlier if you have any additional questions please feel free to add them in the chat window and we'll get back to you with answers in the next 24 hours if you'd like to see ArcTitan in action, we'd be more than happy to set you up in a quick 10 minute demo. Um, or if you have a question on a specific feature that we mentioned, don't hesitate to get in touch. You can reply to the email that we sent you with the webinar recording or visit our website, um, titanhq.com to get in touch. As I mentioned, everyone will receive a follow-up email with a link to view the recording of today's webinar. And I'll also send that um, ArcTitan email comparison guide I mentioned earlier. So with that, on behalf of Titan HQ and our presenters, thank you for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your day.